on the 22nd, right in coal offices. Uh, hey, pal. Mr. Edgeworth's already back. Well, what happened? We got him. We know who bought that spy camera. Eh? This quickly? And this bear is what gave them away, pal. The bear? I figured it out, pal. I figured that we should have been looking into the bear instead of the camera. Um, wasn't that Mr. Edward that figured... Shh, pearls. And go on. Yeah. There's only one person who bought one of those bears who is related to this crime. Who is it? Who would be so rude as to spy on another person in their room? Matt Ungard. Huh? Matt Ungard. Your client. That's who, pal. And here I thought things couldn't get any worse. Are you sure you heard right? That the person who bought this bear was... I heard it from the department store clerk, pal. This is this credit card received for the purchase. It's for $3,800, pal. That's the exact match to the price of that stuffed bear. A receipt? That's all you have? Nah, it's not just the receipt, pal. It, the store clerk said so himself. He told me, I'm sure I sold the bear to Mr. Ungard. I mean, the clerk even got Mr. Ungard's autograph out of it, pal. So I'm sure the person that bought the stuffed bear was Mr. Ungard himself. My sight is failing me. This can't be. Hold it together, man. So what about the spy camera we found? Uh, that was a dead end, pal. I mean, you can get this kind of thing from anywhere. But for now, I guess I can give these back to you to file away in evidence. We get the spy or, you know, camera to go present to Matt. And the stuffed bear. Yay. I know you don't want to give up, pal. I never thought. I didn't think it was possible. The person who put the spy camera in Juan Carita's room was Matt Ungard. Why? Why would Mr. Ungard do something like this? I bet it was to catch Miss Andrews and Mr. Carita in one of their rendezvous. I bet is not good enough for me. I have to know the absolute truth behind this camera. Are you going to go see him? Mr. Ungard, I mean. Yes. I'm scared, Mr. Nick. I wonder. I wonder what we'll find out next. I'm scared myself, but I have to put on a good face for pearls. Matt Ungard, what in the world have you done? Hey, I think we could do stuff here now. Yay. I know we can at least start off with the camera. And we didn't even get to talk to Adrian. It's just already this guy. You're working really late, you know. It's already past 10 p.m., dude. I think it's time... Oh. I think... <laughs> I think it's time you told me the truth. The save z slot zero was covering the name. Relax. I think it's time you told me the truth, dude. <laughs> Don't you know that ignorance is bliss? If you really want to know, let's talk. Yep, we're at this already. Alright, buddy. Tell us your secrets. Ching, 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 So he's got shoulder locks, collar locks, and uh, an arm lock. It's locking his hand. Fist on. lock. <laughs> yeah, fist lock. Now, let's hear what the secret of yours is. Do, 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 do. I know you paid close attention to Mr. Karita, especially on that night. Because camera. All right. Someone used this camera to secretly film Mr. Karita's room the night of the murder. Secretly film? What? And then sent the images the camera took with his transmitter. Wow, but dude, where was this camera you're talking about hidden? In a bear. The spy camera was hidden in this bear's eye. A bear that was supposed to be a present from a fan. Hmm. I guess one had a few of those kinds of fans too, huh, dude? Actually, I wouldn't say this bear was a present from a fan. Hmm, you sure, dude? Who else could it be from? The person who gave this bear to Mr. Karita was... You! Mr. Ongard, don't you know this bear from somewhere? I don't think I've ever met Mr. Bear before, dude. Aw, but he says he knows you. How could you forget such a great friend? 
What else did the bear tell you? He says that the one who put the camera in his eye was you, Mr. Ungard. If I didn't know how you work in court, I think I was in some serious trouble. Come on, this is all a joke, right, dude? You're just pulling my leg. It's like you're not ready to give up your secret yet. Well, do you have any proof you want to show me first? Here is proof that it was you who put the camera inside the bear. Receipt. I have here one credit card receipt, Mr. Ungard. It's from when you bought that stuffed bear. Dude, all you can tell from that is that I spent 3800 3, I go to that department store all the time, okay? This 3800 This could be the toothbrush I bought that one time. A $3,800 toothbrush? It's ivory. It's got elephant hair for bristles. Ew. Ew, elephant hair? Is that what rich people use nowadays? Anyway. Store clerk clearly remembers you and your purchase. After all, you even gave him an autograph, did you not? Dude, you should have said that earlier. Um, so can I ask you one thing? Yes? You're my lawyer, right, dude? So if you are, then why are you looking into stuff like that? Because if I don't know the truth, I can't help you. Sounds more like stupid lawyer talk to me. Hey, let's stop talking about this, okay? No, not yet. I haven't asked you why you set the camera up yet. And what your secret is. Of course, it would be strictly confidential. So, what are you going to do now? I'm going to find out what I want to know, because I must. The reason you hid this camera in Mr. Karita's room and filmed it in secret is... I did just straight up ask us what the reason was, huh? Uh, the tabloid? About Adrian and Juan meeting up? Maybe, yeah. Take that! Oh, there we go. Yay! Adrian Andrews? Sorry, I just didn't think the tabloid would be what we used to say it. There is a rumor going around that Ms. Andrews and Mr. Carita were having secret meetings. You, who was keeping tabs on Mr. Carita, you were going to reveal this as fact and turn it into a scandal. Isn't that right? Dude, you could be such a moron. Huh? Oh man, Mr. Lawyer, dude. That kind of scandal. That's the good stuff. That's what we in the industry call juicy. The good stuff? Juicy? Look, we could get publicity without spending a penny with that kind of stuff. I mean, if people stop paying attention to us, then it'd be the end, dude. Too bad. That wasn't your intention. What are you talking about? I wish your reason for spying was something so innocent, but it wasn't. You didn't spy on Mr. Karita because of Ms. Andrews. Then there's only one reason I can think of for you to do such a thing. The real reason you set up that camera in Mr. Karita's room was... Wait, was that wrong? Uh... Okay, hang on a moment. Oh boy. Okay. Why would he set up a camera... Bear in mind, this was at a hotel room. This wasn't, like, his house. This was a hotel room only during, like, this... this event. Maybe it was because of the press conference? He didn't know about it at all. He said he didn't. Well, what would be the point of that, though? Bear, also bear in mind, <laughs> pardon the pun, but he would have had to send that to him, like, pretty much right away. He would have had to. He would have had to prepare this ahead of time, and the press conference. Even Juan himself set it up like the the day before it would have happened. I think he's not as stupid as he makes himself out to be, so that he knew, and that's why he did it. No, because even Juan himself didn't actually set up the press conference until like right before. I'll try the press conference ticket. Nope. Uh. The music didn't stop. Okay. Is there any other reason... What it, What is there he would want to film that happens in that room? The guy being killed? But if he assassinated the guy with an assassin, why would he want that filmed? Yeah. Unless maybe that's why the assassin is actually trying to get him acquitted. He's using it as blackmail. Hmm. 
I'm gonna try it. No. <laughs> you might have to use the card for that. Oh, it actually worked. That worked. Yay! What is this card? Maybe he doesn't know about this card. This is a certain man's calling card. <clears throat> the man's name is Shelly the Killer, and I'm sure you know of him, don't you? He did react when we said the killer. Shelly the Killer? That's ridiculous. Why would I know some shady scumbag like him? If you really don't know him, then why are you acting so jumpy all of a sudden? Um, this is it. I'm finally starting to get to the truth. Can't afford to make any more mistakes now. Mr. Matt Ungard, I know why you know Mr. DeKiller. It's because... You're, you're his, his client. client. Since you're the one who set up that camera, that means you knew. You knew exactly what was going to happen in that room. So, how? How would you know something like that? It's because you're his client. That's why. You hired Shelley DeKiller to assassinate Mr. Juan Carita. The real mastermind behind this whole murder is... You, Matt Ungard. <sighs> and here I was, trying to be a good boy for you, dude. I thought if you didn't know, you'd be able to do your job without feeling bad. Well, that's what I thought, anyway. Mr. Ungard, you really did hire. Hold on a sec. I'm gonna consult myself, okay? What? Consult myself? Well, I guess it's probably about time anyway. About time for what? I think it's time for you to meet him now, Mr. Lawyer Dude. Oh boy, is the assassin gonna come out of no- OH SHIT! What the fu- How do you do, Mr. Lawyer? I'm Matt Ungard. Oh, he has split personality. Unlock successful? <laughs> what is he swirling? Is that chocolate milk? Shianti? Shianti? I don't know. What is Shianti? You know, the stereotypical, you know, fancy drink that bad guys drink. Oh, Shante. I, it's spelled like Shianti. C-H-I-A-N-T-I. This is what we're debating right now? What just happened? Oh, like I said, I'm pretty sure he just has a split personality. Or he's just a douche. Or he's a douche. Remember earlier when I was like, see, the secret is he doesn't have an eye. That's why he covers half his face. No, he does because he's got a badass scar. Well done, Mr. Wright. I bet it wasn't easy to gather as much information as you have. You really... So you were Shelly DeKiller's client? You don't really think I would dirty my own hands in this, do you? What do you mean? And that woman, Adrian, was quite brave herself. Trying to stick the crime on me. I didn't think she had it in her. But all I care about is that Juan is dead. Isn't that right, Mr. Lawyer? Th that's... You're lying! What a terrible... It's way past your bedtime, little girl. Go on. And let us grown-ups talk about more adult things. But why? Why did you hide the video camera in? A weakling soon believes the words of others, just like that pathetic Adrian. He knew about Ms. Andrews' secret? But I'm no weakling. I don't believe anyone. Least of all, assassins. What? Oh, come now, Mr. Wright. Assassins aren't above blackmail. They turn their clients into cash cows by holding the sinful deed over their heads. And a superstar like me, how much do you think I'm worth, can't guess? And, and that's why... Yes, that's where the video comes in. It's got his face in the crime scene recorded on it, preserved for all time. With that, I can keep him at bay and even blackmail him if I want. That's right, that video is my insurance. Isn't that what they call it, Mr. Wright? Why would you do something so wrong? Because I'm a grown-up, and I can. Good enough of an answer for you, little girl. Why? Why would you kill Mr. Karita? Because he was about to sling so much dung onto my beautiful public image. Scandals are a little annoying, aren't they? 
This is all because of that press conference, isn't it? If Mr. Karita had been able to give it, the Mr. Ungar's secret would have... Ah, well, that's what we call taking advantage of the situation, you know. I had no interest in doing it, really, but bit by bit it crept up on me. And then the situation just presented itself perfectly. How beautiful, I thought. And that's... that's how Mr. Karita ended up dead. Let me tell you something. I'm not like Adrian. I don't depend on anyone. People are simply things to be used, used and thrown away. Put on a sweet, innocent face, and people will swallow anything you feed them. Adrian fell for it. The assassin, too. Oh, and how can I forget? Even you fell for it, Mr. Lawyer. Everyone, all working their butts off for me, Matt Ungard. Aw, oh, did that leave you speechless? What a shame. What's wrong, Mr. Lawyer? You've grown awfully quiet. How could I have been so deceived by you all this time? When we first met, I asked if you had killed Juan Carita. You answered very clearly that you hadn't killed anyone. Hey now, I never told you any lies. The person who did the killing was that the killer guy, right? All I'm guilty of is taking a cat nap in my room. You... You killed Mr. Carita! <laughs> I dare you to say that in court tomorrow. Ah, oh, but too bad, you can't. You're my lawyer after all, aren't you? You could always drop my case and refuse to represent me. How does that sound? Ah, oh, but you can't, can you? That'll be the one thing you absolutely can't do. Mystic Maya! You wouldn't want to test a killer. He's a man of his word, or so I hear. You could end up getting a certain friend of yours rubbed out if you lose. You scoundrel. So if I were you, Mr. Wright, Esquire, I think I would give it my all tomorrow. Remember, everyone likes a happy win-win resolution. I'll get you for this. That's such a cliche phrase. Juan said something just like that, if memory serves. Of course. Well, we all know how things, how well things turned out for him, don't we? Good night, Mr. Lawyer. <coughs> so what is his secret? Just that he's a little evil bastard. Maybe. Maya. I didn't really get a secret out of that. Maya, what am I supposed to do? And now... Now you finally found it. Oh, hmm. okay. I almost spit out my water. It's worse! <laughs> the starting line of this case. <laughs> Edgeworth! I don't care for the horrid atmosphere in here. Let's return to the precinct. Could you pay for a new juice box? Half coffee. Good enough. Well, right. What are you going to do if you plan on changing your defense? No! We can't do that. That's right. He's holding Maya hostage. What? What should I do? That's not something I can answer for you. Mr. Edgeworth? Right. Only you can decide where to go from here. One year ago, at the time, I didn't truly really understand what a prosecutor was. That is why I had to leave the prosecutor's office. I felt that I couldn't stand in a court of law until I knew what a prosecutor really was. And now, right, it's your turn. My turn? What is this thing called a lawyer? What can you do as one? You must find the answer, and you must find it on your own. Oh boy. I'm a lawyer, but to fight for someone who is clearly a killer, Matt Ungard, that man is really... Uh -huh. It doesn't matter who. Every person deserves a proper defense and a fair trial. Isn't that the basis of our judicial system? Proper defense? What exactly is that? Is it where a lawyer forcibly and blindly gets an acquittal through shouting and trickery? Ironic that you of all people should say such a thing. Isn't that exactly how you have fought for your clients up until now? Uh... Well, that may be true, but, but that's... 
That's because I... That's because I believe my clients to be innocent from the bottom of my heart. But if I were to get unguarded acquittal, that... That isn't a proper defense at all. I became a lawyer because I thought... I thought I could save people who were suffering and in pain. But, when I look at this mess we're in, I can't even protect the person closest to me. Even if I win the case, I still lose in the end. I just don't know what to do! Right. Would you get a hold of yourself? You have it all wrong. Huh? We aren't some sort of heroes. We're only human, you and I. You want to save someone. There's something easier said than done, wouldn't you say? That that's... You're a defense lawyer. You can't run away from that. You can only fight. That's all you can do. People like you and Francisca von Karma are always using all you have to pin me down. You fight to the very end, even when you know the truth is not with you. But I'm not like you. I can't fight for a false verdict, for a man I clearly know to be guilty. Francisca... She fights for herself. The only thing she fights for is her perfect win record. That's all. And? Isn't that the same as you? Isn't that why you ran away a year ago? Because your precious win record was destroyed? You were so petty! I see. Now I understand why you despise me, so... However, you're mistaken. What are you? Thanks to you, when you sealed off my path to a perfect win record, I began to realize the error of my ways. I realized that things such as a perfect record were meaningless. Eh? I don't believe you. Are you saying that is that is why you left the prosecutor's office? But then, why? Why are you here now? The answer to that is something you will find out on your own. Have faith you will see it before the verdict is read tomorrow. But if you can't, then you will be powerless to change the ending of this story. Beep, beep, beep. And Mr. Nick, the transceiver! Beep. I'm sorry for what happened earlier. Well then, Mr. Attorney, do you wager you could obtain an acquittal tomorrow? My, my. What is the matter, Mr. Attorney? I don't sense your usual anger this time. Tell me, please. Why are you holding Maya hostage for Mr. Ongard's sake? Why are you... Why are you doing this for that cold-blooded killer? Right. Please don't misunderstand things. He is my client. Don't toy with me! A man who hires an assassin is just as much of a killer himself. I believe you were asking me for a reason as to why I am doing what I am. Yeah. This is what I like to call my aftercare. What the heck is aftercare? My name carries a certain amount of honor and dignity, Mr. Attorney. I take great care to ensure that no suspicion falls upon my clients for my handiwork. That is what is called client relations, and it is a part of an assassin's duty. An assassin's duty? You were unlucky this time, and my client was arrested as a suspect. As a result, I did what I had to do to enlist your expert help, Mr. Attorney to ensure that you would do everything in your power to the very end. What is your name? I believe I told you once before, however. You did, but... My name is De Killer. Shelly De Killer. You're Shelly De Killer. Please keep in mind you do not have much space to maneuver with me. As a De Killer, I always finish what I set out to do. If you fail to keep up your end of the bargain, Maya! It will be my duty as an assassin to see if she receives a nice long nap. Crying pearl noises. Now then, if you'll excuse me, if someone were to trace this signal back to me, it would be quite troublesome. Meow well, indeed. Oh. Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya! I. I don't know what to say. Edgeworth! Hmm? Do you hear that? At the end of that transmission? Meow. Huh? Oh, it sounded like a cat. A cat? 
can't be. I can't. Can it? What is it? I think. I know where Shelly DeKiller is holding Maya hostage. Edgeworth, have all police units head for Unguard Mansion immediately. All right. You hurry over as well, then. Don't lose hope yet, Pearls. The fight has only just begun. Yeah. Oh, wait, sorry. Uh, Chailing Maynard? Chailing Maynard, come shoot here. Yeah! We have to go here so that we can actually get there. Yeah! There's a bear. Bear! Maya! Pearl! Nope, wait, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Please answer us, Mystic Maya! We have this area completely surrounded. There is no way for him to escape. Assuming he's still in the area. I can't believe it. That butler, all this time, he was the killer. He and Ungod were working together all this time. I'm sure they had worked out a contingency plan ahead of time. Examine Bear. Oh, it's a figurine of a bear. But there are a lot of cuts in him for some reason. Figurine added to the court record. A bear? This bear did it! Isn't that more of a thing for Mr. Karita? Why would something like this be here, and why are you smiling? Right, look down. There's a little pet door installed here. Ah, I'm sure that's for Shu. You think that this came through that little door? Ugh, this door. It's locked. Well, I'm pretty used to breaking doors down by now. Let's go, Edgeworth. Ah, there's no one here. The door is also still up. From the looks of this room, I would say this is Engard's private lounge. Look at this right. An antenna for sending and receiving radio signals and a VCR. Check inside the deck. If there's a tape, it would be an important piece of evidence. If we're lucky, it'll have the moment the crime was committed recorded on. I'm sorry, but... The tape deck is empty. There's no tape to be found. No... There's no mistake that someone used this to record something. Looks like someone took the tape we're looking for and escaped with it. Where's the wine cellar? Right hey, there here. it is. We searched all over, but it looks like he got away. What's that thing on the ground? I'm sorry. It looks like he slipped out of our grass this time. And now, we've lost our only lead. Don't give up yet. That little girl is looking to you to be her pillar. Hug me. Yeah, you're right. We're close, I can tell. We've already set up checkpoints along every route leading out of this district. Lead the rest to us. Maya. This looks like a picture of Miss Inpax. With love, Celeste. Miss Inpax? You mean... Yes, Mr. Karita's former manager. Why would a patron Miss Inpax be here in Mr. Engard's mansion? Why does it say, with love? Hmm, this might be a clue. Or it might be the thing we need to show to Adrian. <coughs> What's wrong, Pearls? Please let me see that picture frame! Huh? What's so special about the frame? On the back! There's something written on the back of the frame! Maya... It's Mystic Maya! She left us a message! What? I thought you'd come. I knew you would. Now listen up. You better get on guard a guilty sentence, okay? If you get that creepy slime bag and not guilty, I'll never forgive you. Ever. 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 I'm fine, so you don't need to worry. There's so much I want to write, but I don't think I have a lot of time left. Pearly, you're there too, right? Make sure you help Nick, okay? Someone's gotta watch out for the helpless lunk. Um, that's it for now, Nick. I guess I'll talk to you guys later. Man, she wrote a lot on that! Yeah. No. Mystic Maya! The, the, the mystic thing is getting old. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. What's wrong? Why the blank stare? No, oh, um, nothing. We've searched the house, and this is the last room. 
Looks like he eluded us. Edgeworth. Yes? As far as clues go, I think this is about all I'm going to get. But I'm still short one last thing. And what is that? Go show it to her. Ms. Andrews Cyclone. If I could just find out what secret she's holding, then I think I stand a chance in court tomorrow. To blow this case wide open and expose the truth. I think I know what you're thinking. I'll contact the detention center. Um, thanks, Edgeworth. Well, let's go, Pearls. It's time to open that last lock. Okay, just takes us here automatically. That's good. Eh. Good evening, Mr. Wright. But looking at the window outside, it looks like it's morning. It is perpetually morning here in jail. <laughs> there was it's that for all those people who aren't morning people. You see that security guard there the whole time? Did he not hear what freaking Matt said? <laughs> he... Uh, he's a painting. <laughs> What's wrong? You look ill. Miss Andrews, I have come to remove your psych lock. Psych lock? I want to know, and you will tell me, your secret. Fine, go ahead. Try to break me if you can. Damn, he is just not giving two shits right now. He's just like, tell me your secret woman. <laughs> if this scream wasn't here, I would smash this thing over your head. All right. Out of curiosity, real quick. Did it... Nope, it did not update this. I thought it might have. We don't really know that's him. He, no, he outright said, The butler! And to think, I thought I recognized him. Or something like that. No, I don't think so. Yeah, he, he outright mentioned the butler when we went in there. So, uh, relation between Celeste and Matt. Three full pages of evidence. This, this is a photo of Ms. Impacts, correct? She looks younger than when she passed away, though. What? With love, Celeste. This is Ms. Impacts' handwriting, isn't it? Where did you find this? No, that's all right. It was a rhetorical question. Yeah, it is. I found this at Mr. Ongard's mansion. And after all this time, my last remaining secret has been revealed. I'm a virgin. Okay. Celeste, she was supposed to get married to Juan. Yes, but I heard that it didn't work out. Because Mr. Carita didn't want to get married to her anymore, right? Yes. Because of Matt. Because of Mr. Ungard? What do you mean? I think I can see where this is going. Celeste. She was Matt's manager a long time ago. She was the happiest woman in the world at that time. I was working part-time back then, and I often saw the two of them together. So that's why, with love, Celeste is written on the frame of that picture. They were a couple, weren't they? They were a couple, weren't they? <laughs> Pearl, you hit puberty. It wasn't anything as splendid as that. Celeste was being used. Toyed with until she was thrown away. So horrible. Matt's entire image is built around how nice and wonderful of a man he is. A scandal would have destroyed that. Which is why Celeste, in her kindness, moved over to Worldwide Studios. And that is where she met Juan. He seemed, she seemed really happy with him, even happier than when she was with Matt. Celeste and Juan were such a good match they were even planning to get married. And then, it was suddenly called off. On the night Juan called their marriage off, Celeste, she killed herself. And that's why I framed Matt. It was revenge for Celeste and for myself. 
I'm sure even you can guess why Juan called the wedding off, right? Matt confessed to Juan about his relationship with Celeste. I see. So that's what happened. But... Then why did Mr. Carita have to call off the wedding? I don't understand at all. It was probably because of his worthless male pride. Juan and Matt were always fierce rivals. Matt waited for the wedding announcement and then unleashed the truth on Juan. He was aiming for when it would hurt Juan the most. Or Miss Impax. That wasn't the end of it. That day, I'm almost certain that Celeste left a suicide note behind. And in that note, she left a detailed account of Matt's various misdeeds and, so that she would never again be hurt by Matt, she chose to die. Then, when Juan discovered her body, he hid her note. But why would he do that? It's simple. Juan realized that the note was a powerful weapon against Matt, and it would be especially damaging to his refreshing like a spring breeze image. In any case, with his pride hurt, Juan sought revenge. Revenge? There's that word again. Juan wanted to publicly disclose the contents of that suicide note. At a time that would cause Matt the most damage, of course. And that was... at the press conference after the stage show. I know all about it, because I heard it all from Juan. It was so I could find out about all this that I drew close to Juan to begin with. They're quite a pair of hideous monsters, aren't they? Even Celeste's death was something for them to use in their game. That night when I found Juan's body, it was only natural that I thought the murderer was Matt. Those two were always spying on one another after all. As for me, I was frantically searching for Celeste's suicide note. I wanted to destroy it before it ever went public. I was going to burn it. I ain't even brought a lighter. But I couldn't find the suicide note, and that's when revenge crossed my mind. Yes, I was going to bring I was going to bring them my own kind of cruel revenge. Celeste was killed by those two monsters. So when I stabbed Juan's body with that knife, I didn't feel a single shred of guilt. And that's all I have to say. Well, Mr. Wright, even knowing all this, are you still going to help that man? I... I'm a lawyer. I see. What a foul profession. Thank you very much for your time and for talking with me. It was no big deal. I couldn't sleep anyway. I can't sleep either. Not with my situation, or with what I know now. Whoosh! Boom, boom!